let us tell you how numbers can make you decide which treatment is better the first thing that we usually rely upon is plausibility as the mass caused by bronchoconstriction so bronchodilator should help but now there is a paradigm shift nobody believes in that this should help now they only believe in did it help so should help has been converted to did it help and therefore that has to be supported by numbers now supposing there is one case in which it did help that is called as a case report many cases that it did help is called as case series right up to this all evidence belongs to the dustbin because they do not have controls what happened in case you did not give this treatment that is control so so any treatment must help as compared to controls or other standard treatments and if this is without random allocation then then can be other factors that can explain the results for example let me tell you that if there is a intercondylar fracture and we compare operative and conservative treatment done in the past few years then you would find the conservative treatment has 60% chances of success and operative treatment has 30% chances of of success now if we say that conservative treatment was done primarily for undisplaced fractures or less displaced fractures then displacement of fracture becomes the other explanation of the result and this factor is called as confounder because if there were more undisplaced fractures in the conservative group that may have been the reason of better results in the conservative group so now how to deal with confounders there are many methods but one of the best methods is random allocation if we randomly allocate to the conservative and operative group over a sufficient sample size then the two groups will be rendered equal for all known and unknown confounders that means all known and unknown other factors which can affect result and therefore the only explanation of the difference that we see in the study would be attributable to the difference in the treatment type so randomized control trials are thus the most believable amongst the evidence by which we should choose which is the better treatment for our patients now let me do it for your so here is the research question should we use platelet rich plasma instead of standard steroid injection for tennis elbow now platelet rich plasma now costs about 6000 rupees if, if if it is given in pims and a steroid injection would cost less than 600 so should we really use platelet rich plasma for tennis elbow or not in patients who can afford so we took 10 108 cases for of tennis elbow we randomly allocated to the platelet rich plasma group and the steroid injection group and we compared the baseline value of 
visual analog scale, grip strength, and inertial score in the two groups at two weeks, one month, and three months. And if we subtract the baseline value of pain, let us say it was seven or eight, from the value at three weeks, we would know, let us say it was uh, two. So six was the improvement at three months in that particular case. So improvement is calculated by subtracting the value at three months from the baseline value. And we compared this improvement from baseline at two weeks, one and three months. So improvement from baseline is calculated at each period of follow-up for all the three measurements. And this improvement has been compared in the platelet rich plasma group and the steroid injection group. So here is the table which shows you the results. This is improvement in VAS. This is improvement in grip strength. And this is improvement in inertial score. This is overall mean of the three measurements, regardless of whether they belonged to the steroid or the PRP group. And this is the standard deviation of the mean. So mean plus minus SD, 9.43 plus minus 1.21 is the overall value for improvement in VAS in the two groups. Now at two weeks, this is the value with the PRP group and at two weeks this is the value for the steroid group and you see that uh, here since the PRP is less improved as compared to the steroid group the value is in minus and this is shown in the orange color now this means that wherever there is orange Steroid has done better than PRP. So at two weeks, steroid is doing better than PRP. And this is the amount by which it is doing better. 1.11 for VAS, 0.24 for grip strength, and 0.5 for inertial score. But when we go to one month, and this is the significance, and you find that the significance is there for the VAS and the inertial score, but not for grip strength, because here the value is not less than 0.48. At one month, you find that on these two parameters, PRP has started doing better. And at three months, you find that on all three parameters, PRP is doing better. And the p-value is significant. So 7.61 minus 6.87. This is the PRP, this is the steroid, is 0 0.74. This is the improvement. But here you would see that 2.07 minus 3.18 is minus 1.11, which suggests that the steroid is doing better. So this table, let us see how to get these numbers. So the first component of any randomized control trial is random allocation. Randomly allocating to the two groups or three groups would make all the groups equal on all other explanations of the result except the treatment so that the difference in the groups that you see in the result 
can be explained only by treatment and nothing else. So this random allocation deals with confounders. Let us quickly show you how to do it. So here we uh, take the Excel. We make it full screen. We put one here. In the second, we say equal to sum. I will increase the zoom size. So sum bracket open. And we say A1 plus 1. So this will become 2. Then we copy this control this uh, 2 by say control C and we say let us say up to 30 if we say control V here is the number of cases that you have to take as per your sample size now we say that in these 30 we want to give treatment 1 in the first 10 in the 10 and we want to give treatment 2 in the in the next 10 and we want to give treatment 3 in the rest of the 10 so we want to randomize to three groups and 10 each in the 30 sample size. Now we say equal to and we say rand. We open a bracket and then we close a bracket and we say star and we say 30 which means give us a random number up to 30. So is equal to rand bracket open bracket close star 30. And when we say enter, it gives us some number. Now we copy this number and we go up to the up to 30. And we say control V, which means copy. So we have all these numbers. Now we choose column B and column C, shift column C, and we say sort. And we say smallest to largest or largest to smallest, any anyone. And as we say sort, we go on to data, we say sort and it is we say sort on column c so when we say sort on column c you say that these one two three are thrown around so the first case gets one the second case gets two and the third the th second case gets one also and the third case gets two so this is the random allocation of the three types of treatment for 30 cases, 10 each. So I hope you will remember this random allocation because it is the life and the most important component in randomized control trials which can deal with known and unknown confounders. Confounders are other explanations which can affect the result, other differences which can explain the result. So this is the master chart. The first row, this is what is data. So data has, is a collection of variables. Variables are things that vary from case to case. So 
the first row is always variable name so treatment 0 or 1 then these yellow colored are describing the patient now this is visual on analog scale on baseline at two weeks at one month at three months and this is improvement at two weeks that means if you see this four it is baseline minus two weeks so it is improvement at two weeks at uh, one month at three months and same with the grip strength and same with the inertial score so we will now sh show you how to compare this improvement at three weeks between cases and controls so this is what is a master chart which is analyzed which is put in an excel file and analyzed so now we will show you the analysis of that excel sheet to tell you how we will compare improvement in vas given that the patient had prp or had steroid so this is fp info it is a cdc developed software and it is a freeware so you can download it on your computer so we click on this and as we click on it this comes up there are many functions of the stat calc but we will go on to the classic function it can even create maps epidemic maps which we'll show you sometimes else it can give you a stat cal calculator but let's concentrate on this classic so we have opened up the classic and we'll say read and after read we will go on to say that our file is an xls file and we'll browse in browse we'll find out that the location is on desktop and as it is Utsav's master chart for his MS thesis, we we'll click on this and we'll say open. It says that the first row contains header information, we'll say yes, and it will open this sheet and then we'll say okay. So it will tell us that there are 108 records. And we think that is correct and we'll simply list all variables to see the excel sheet for ourselves so there's the treatment type then patient characteristics like name age sex weight side date of injection hemoglobin btct tlc random blood sugar platelet platelet time INR and now these are the results so this is the visual analog scale at baseline at two weeks at one uh, month at three months so it was 10 and it became one that that means that there was an improvement of nine so this is the improvement at two weeks improvement at one month and this is the improvement at nine three months so what we will do is compare the two groups on this improvement and this is how we'll do it so we'll say means and we'll say means of 
improvement at three months and will cross tabulate it by the treatment and if we say okay it will give us this description that means it has given us the the mean 6.8 in the control group that means steroid group and 7.6 in the PRP group with its standard deviation and it tells us that if we try to test the significance the p value is 0 0.007 which means that there is 7 in a 1000 chance that the difference that we are seeing is by chance so that if it will be significant if we do this trial multiple times in the target population the 95 percent confidence interval also shows you the same same readings so this is how we will arrive at that table and you'll remember these numbers 6.8 and 7.6 to see whether it is in that table or not So now you see the numbers 7.61, 6.87, 3 months PRP, 3 months steroid, the difference is 0 0.74. That means PRP is 0 0.74 better than 6.87 and the p-value is significant. Same way you have done with the improvement at GS grip strength and improvement with the inertial score best is grip strength is but much much better in the PRP group as compared to steroid group so these are the numbers that show you the magnitude of difference and all green means that the PRP is better so you remember the 7.61 and 6.87 was given to you by epinfo so this is how you use the epinfo to create this table let us say thank you to kutsav aman gr3 pims for allowing us to use his ms thesis data for, for this teaching video